So how do you properly do a short field landing in a tailwheel airplane? Well, I'll make you a deal. Give me five minutes of your time and I'll go ahead and walk you through how it's done correctly. Let's go ahead and take a little sneak peek here at our online how to fly a tailwheel airplane course at flyatmikealpha.com. We'll give you an inside look here at what the videos are like inside the course, starting off here with our short field landing. So let's go ahead and break this down into three easy steps, right? So we have the approach, the touchdown, and the rollout, okay? So approach, landing, and rollout. Any good landing starts with a good approach. So how do we have to set up an approach for a short field landing? Well, it's going to be similar to an approach for any other landing, other than we're coming in slightly slower. And of course, those speeds are published in our POH for that specific airplane. But say if you normally come in at 70, maybe now you're coming in at 60 or 65 or something like that. Just a few miles per hour or a few knots slower than you normally would. You're also going to be coming in with full flaps, be fully configured and stable, hopefully by 500 feet AGL. So you're coming in in a nice straight line or relatively aligned with the runway from 500 feet all the way down, nice steady descent rate. You're not messing around with power or pitch or airspeed. You're not chasing anything. You're nice and stable all the way down to the ground. And you're kind of dragging the airplane in, keeping a little bit of power on. So you'll be keeping the airplane flying by keeping that power on. It's not an idle descent. We have a little bit of power on there, and as we come down to our point, we're going to chop that power, and that's going to help the airplane to lose lift and make it touch when we want. That's getting in to the touchdown part of this, right? So we're carrying that power in, dragging the airplane in nice and slow on the backside of the power curve with full flaps all the way down to the ground, and just maybe about a foot or so above the ground, we chop that power. The airplane's entering in the ground effect, and so we chop the power so we don't float at all. It loses lift, it loses some of that speed, it sets down, we get the wheels on the ground, and we're going to be touching in relatively a three-point attitude, or certainly a tail-low attitude here, because we're coming in at minimum speed. If we touch tailwheel first, that's okay. When the tailwheel touches first, it's going to then let the mains fall into the ground, lowering the angle of attack, helping the airplane stick to the ground. Now, on the rollout, it's very similar to doing this in a nose wheel airplane, right? If we have time, if we're able to, we get rid of the flaps to dump as much weight onto the main gear as possible. And then we go ahead and apply moderate to heavy braking as we're able to based on the surface we're landing on and based on the characteristics of that tailwheel airplane. So some airplanes, like we see this 170 here, we can actually lock up the tires on and it's not going to flip on gravel. If it was pavement, it would certainly flip if we actually locked up the brakes like this. But on gravel, the tires will skid. Some of these other airplanes, if we lock up the tires, even on gravel, they'll still flip over. So we're going to be really pinning the tail to the ground. You can see how the elevator is full, nose up, the sticks all the way back when these guys are landing. They get rid of the flaps as soon as possible. They let the weight sit onto the wheels and they apply pretty heavy braking, of course, with power at idle so you don't have any excess power pulling you forward. Now, one helpful tidbit I'll share with you here is A, don't apply so much brakes you flip your airplane. B, if you feel like you're about to, get off the brakes, add some power and pull that sticker yoke all the way back. Even if the airplane's nearly about to flip over, if you get off the brakes right away, add a bunch of power, and haul back on that yoke or stick, it should set the tail back down on the ground. Now, if you smack the tail on the ground really hard, that's not good either, but much better to smack your tail on the ground and break a tailwheel off than it is actually flip the airplane and put the prop in the dirt. So we can look at these guys doing it here in competition, and obviously competition's not totally how we're going to be doing it in the real world or in the flight training world, but the idea and the principles are the same, okay? Stable approach touching down, not hard, not soft. It's a kind of a firm touchdown, putting the airplane on the spot you want it to be because you want to get down onto that runway or onto your mark as soon as possible after you clear those obstacles landing on your short field. You're going to go ahead and put as much weight on the wheels as possible. So to do that, you can retract flaps and also apply heavy braking that may raise your tail slightly if the tail raises a little bit it's okay you're dumping angle of attack you're dumping lift off the wing you just don't want to apply so much brake you flip over in this case when you're learning less is better okay we want to get comfortable applying light braking and then medium braking then moderate braking and then heavy braking before we jump right into heavy and we put the airplane on its back remember to gradually apply the brakes and always remember you can release the brakes, add power, and haul back on the yoker stick to put the tail back on the ground if it feels like it's coming over on you. Now there's a little sneak peek for you inside the Tailwheel Pilot Flying course online at flyatmikealpha.com, an entire course dedicated to nothing but tailwheel flying to prep you for your tailwheel endorsement or to get you ready if you're actually going to be training for your initial 
private pilot certificate in a tailwheel aircraft. Definitely check out that course there. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button below and give us a thumbs up on the video right there to the bottom right. Go ahead and click on it. It really does actually help out our channel. Be sure to check out the other awesome courses in our online aviation learning center at fly8mikealpha.com. You can start out with a free account today. Be sure to share this video on Facebook with your friends. And if you like this video, then you'll really love all the other videos, over 400 videos in our online ground school at flyatmikealpha.com. Go ahead and sign up for free today. And remember, guys, if you can't fly every day, then fly8mikealpha.com. We will see you all next time.